Chuck Todd is our uh, special guest. Meet the Press on NBC. Meet the Press Daily on MSNBC. It's been different. Right. I mean, how yeah. different has this? Uh, just give us your broad thoughts on the election cycle. It's look, it's it's an anomaly. It's my favorite description. It's the black swan election. I don't think we're going to have anything else like it. I think it will certainly have an impact on how media's relationship with politicians. I think the two parties were in the middle of a fracture uh, where both parties are fracturing. We have this you know, high level of distrust of all major institutions, whether you're a politician, whether you run a sports league. I mean, you know, commissioners are unpopular with fans in the same way political parties are unpopular. So we're, we're in one of these just depressing moments. And look, I'll, look, this election's depressing. It, mm. it just is. It's, you know, people say, oh, you know, uh, you must be having the time of your life. And it's like, yeah, you know, I want, uh, I love politics. Mm. I like celebrating democracy. We're not, it doesn't feel like we're just celebrating it right now. You do cover the presidents very closely. Mm -hmm. President Obama, President Bush. Um, we hear about what big baseball fans they are. Are they watching a lot of baseball, following baseball? W, a former owner. Big baseball fan, like, and you know, he was a he he was a, a, had the package, so he was watching extra innings before anybody realized that was cool, unless you had Direct TV and all mm -hmm. of that. Uh, President Obama's more—he's a basketball guy, and he and he knows it deep. You could go with President Bush; he knew who today would be a. I'm sure today is a day he's following closely. It's call-up day. He's the type of fan that knew who some of the big call-ups were going to be, and he was curious about. It. Obama's that way with basketball. Mm -hmm. He can go seven, eight guys deep on every team, whether NBA or, or major college. So he's got to get briefed on the White Sox. On now. the White Sox. <laughs> he says, as a good South Sider, he says he's a fan, although I have to say, my, my, my mom grew up a White Sox fan. I, like, hung my head in shame for her when I saw the name of their ballpark. Oh. Guaranteed rate field. Yeah, it's like, really that's a tough one. They're already to not the Cubs. Yeah, right. you know, poor White Sox, are, they're already <laughs> right, not the right. Cubs. And now they're stuck playing in something not called Comiskey. Yeah. You know, not called yeah. even U.S. Cellular anymore. Yeah. It's guaranteed rate. That's a tough one. That is a tough one. Uh, I, I haven't had to come to grips with that yet or say, hey, uh, let's you know. go out to the rate. Let's or go to the rate. I'm, uh, the guaranteed. <laughs> it's, it's guaranteed, you know, everybody. <laughs> free hot dog and a quarter point off your mortgage. You were, uh, yeah. you were a, that sounds good, yeah. Dodgers fan in the 70s, right? So that's, 70s a, and 80s, that's a good yeah. time to be a, a, a Dodgers fan. My first memory, 77, 78 World Series. I get them a little bit confused mm -hmm. since Dodgers lost them both. Um... But I do know it, and my dad always raised me to know it. Oh, it's, you know, Reg, just all you need to know is Reggie Jackson cheated in the World Series. Right, you were, you're so, still angry about that, the hip, I, little hip I, check? A little, little bit of the hip <laughs> check. Uh, my dad was angrier than, than I was. 81 was, was sort of my big year as a true Dodger fan, mm -hmm. uh, more than anything else. And, and I'd, we used to, I grew up in Miami, so you think, why a Dodger fan? But we'd go to Vero Beach, only about a two-hour drive oh, okay. north. Yep. Spent a lot of time at Dodger Town back when, when sort of the first of the great spring training facilities. Right, right. And, um, uh, meeting Fernando and then following him that year. Uh, it's, a, it's an indelible year for me. People, uh, you, you have to remind yourself of just how great he was. And it brings us to this now. I had a thing, um, this epiphany of, hey, if we're looking at the Hall of Fame, we do a lot of Hall of Fame stuff here on yeah. this network, obviously. If you're looking at the Hall of Fame way back when, who says it can't be made for the guys who were truly great at their peak and maybe not for 12 or 15 or 20 years? Here are my best peak Hall of Fame candidates, like in the tradition of Dizzy Dean yeah. or Sandy Koufax, Don Mattingly, Dale Murphy, Dick Allen, who should be in anyway, Johan Santana, Bucky Walters, who was with the, the Reds in the late 30s and 40s. You, I think, have a very good candidate for the peak Hall of Fame. Make your case. My, uh, Fernando Valenzuela. Here's a guy, and your stats guy, I, I just said, go look at baseball reference. I said, look at the number of innings he threw in the 80s right. each year, and then your guys crunched the numbers. He averaged 255 innings per year from 81 to 87. Oh, by the way, you guys got me this 311 ERA. Only Nolan Ryan had a lower ERA during that period of time. Oh, and look, look, he was a star. And the other part, and we were just talking this before, Hall of Fame, fame. Uh, when, when the Dodgers were talking about who was their Mount Rushmore, the, for, look, Fernando's in that list. Fernando, uh, Fernando's the reason why the Dodgers and Latin America are tighter today than they ever were then at the time. Mexican, uh, Mexican Americans mm -hmm. that lived in, in Los Angeles were not Dodger fans before Fernando. In fact, they, they didn't like the Dodgers. There was a big controversy over Chavez Ravine right. uh, that went decades back. So he, he was more than just a great pitcher. Oh, by the way, he was a great pitcher. So if Tommy Lasorda doesn't run him ragged by putting him out there, <laughs> does he have, he had a 15 year career in seven years. Right, right. And is he getting punished because now nobody, who's, who's throwing 255 innings? Yeah, no, it's not happening. It, it just let alone 275. Let alone, right, aver to, yeah. averaging 255. Yeah. And if he had been stretched out, and if he had been coddled, 
you know, some people would say it's coddling, but maybe it's the Protected. proper way. Yeah. Protecting an asset. <laughs> right, right. He'd have probably been a 15-year guy. Yeah. Probably would have averaged, you know, uh, uh, it, it, in, a, in a way, gotten some of the bigger numbers you need to get. Probably would have gotten over 200 wins. Probably would have gotten mm. a lot closer to 3,000 strikeouts. And who says those have to be our parameters? I mean, and I've, I fall victim to this, saying, oh, I want this. How is his best 10 years, his best 12 years? And I think the best case you have is an important player, right? Very important mm -hmm. player to the history of baseball, but also at his peak, who would you have rather had over a two or three year period? Really nobody. He's a, he will be on like that 81 one team on yeah. that 81 team. Who did the Dodgers want on the mound? Sutton, an actual hall of famer yeah. or Fernando and Sutton was, it was one more. He was not, he was still two years away from being from fading. He was still a, a, a top guy then. Right. They wanted Fernando, not Sutton. And Sutton was a Hall of Famer. All right, I'm going to take up that case. I, I love it. Right. I, I'll I used do to, that. My obsession used to be getting Garvey in the Hall of Fame because I that was the first set of cards yeah. that I owned yeah. were all the Garvey. Sure. I'm in all in on Fernando now. Excellent. I'll join you on that. Can you join us on the, Let's the, do it, man. On, on the fighting the war on summer? This last war week. on Keep, summer? Keeping this last week of summer? My kids are all for it. My son is watching <laughs> now and not in school because in Washington and in Virginia and Maryland, we don't start school until after Labor Day. They too. get it right. You know, see, the, the Maryland governor just put a decree that in that state, summer begins after Labor Day, as it should be. Yeah, I'm all for it. All right, there you go. Take there it is. up. All right, we'll work together on this. <laughs>